Hello, don't you dare touch that mouse. You are right where you are supposed to be. And that on is on the Powernomics YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Claude Anderson, probably your only black forensic historian in this nation. Today, I got a couple of things I wanna to talk to you about. First of all, to let you know that I'm here to do what's never been done. And that is to connect the dots between where black folk are, what got them where they are, and what's been keeping them where they are. And we're gonna start by giving you the right data and the right understandings. Now, my first commitment is something I learned years ago as a young man. Back as a young man, I said to myself once and looking at some historical documents uh, that I'm gonna do something to try to take care of the most beaten, enslaved, Jim Crow, uh, maldistributed people in the world. And that is the black people in this nation. They've been beat up on by every generation of every, every ethnic group, every religious group, every cultural group, every language group, everybody has, in, has exploited, misused, and enriched themselves off of black folk. So I said to myself, I got to do something. And the first thing that I said I was gonna do, when I looked around, I saw a picture of a praying black slave. And what he was saying is that he said, I pray that one day there shall rise among my people a warrior who would know our suffering and would be able to fight our battles. Well, I'm here. I might not be that warrior, but I am gonna to try to fight black folks' battles. I made a commitment to myself back in those days to say, anytime I get a chance, I'm gonna to try to bring some justice to those beaten, underclass, subordinated, and lynched, castrated, misused, and abused people called black Americans. Now, in doing that, I said, I, I want to, what, how should I go about doing it? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to get as much education as I could. And so I'm, I'm, I was blessed. I, on, I earned about six college degrees, everything from uh, social economics to politics, to education and to business. And I, 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 I'm very proud of those accomplishments. Then I said, now how do I best use those things? Oh, how do I get any blessings or return for having acquired all these different degrees? It happened just like I anticipated and was delighted to have happen. And that is, I got appointed, first of all, to some of the best positions a man could ever have. In education, for instance, I got a chance to uh, teach every grade level from the, from the elementary school levels to high schools, to junior colleges and to two or three universities. And lastly, I, had a, I got a chance to be appointed to be over education for the state of Florida for about seven years from 1970 to 1977. That was a very unique appointment. Governor Ruben Askew appointed me to be over everything in education in the state of Florida. That's from the elementary school all the way to the graduate schools in both the private sector and in the public sector. That was very special. And I enjoyed doing that. And I tried to bring some justice and some better educational opportunities for black folk and black children in the state of Florida. Next thing I knew, I said, now, what else am I going to get for having acquired all these different degrees? Then ironically, I was appointed to be the first black in the history of the nation to ever be the, to manage a presidential election for Jimmy Carter. I was Jimmy Carter's campaign manager in the South and in Florida. I didn't say I was in a, in a, a I was participating in a political campaign, like passing out literature or knocking on doors. I was the actual manager a black man managing the presidential election. Following that, I also had a chance to be the deputy political strategist for Bill Clinton in Maryland. As I made two times, twice, I had those opportunities to be a manager for presidential elections. Secondly, I got a chance to run political campaigns for attorney generals, for governors, for mayors, uh, for state legislators, and for uh, uh, general elections for school board members. And so I got a chance to understand the real nature of politics. So I, could, I appreciated that. But most importantly, because of my running the campaign for Jimmy Carter, I got the point, chance to be the first black appointed to assistant secretary in the United States Department of Commerce and be a sub cabinet member for a president. In that position, I also got a chance to, uh, to operate. That's something no black had, had done before. And that was to operate as a uh, advisor and a director and a chairman for economic development for governors in the southeastern states and, and, and advocated, advised them in developing 
economic opportunities in the southeastern states, period. Um, I head up trade missions for the governors in, in, this, in, the, in the South, in the Caribbean, in Africa, and also in Europe. And so that was a very unique opportunity. Also in that position as a, with, the, with the president, I had a chance to also be able to over the surplus property program for the federal government, where my signature alone, I could sign up a piece of paper and give away surplus property to anybody I wanted, anything that the government had. All I needed was all I needed was to get the serial numbers of that property. I had 45 member staff down in Charleston, South Carolina. And that was a very unique opportunity. It allowed me to have a chance to appoint and to push through the, the election or the appointment of three black federal judges. And so I appreciate those opportunities. And when I left that administration, I went down and said, what can I do about business with all these degrees I've gotten? Well, I had a chance also to be appointed to, uh, to be the director and help set up Miami Capital, Miami Citywide, and uh, the allocation of resources there. Out of my out of the Department of Commerce where I work, where I had been appointed, we pulled about $9 million out of there and about another $1 million out of the Department of Labor and, and built of what's called a Miami Capital, Miami Citywide. I had about a $10 million revolving loan fund. And over the course of about two or three years, I appointed and set up and established 57 different businesses in, this, in Miami Capital and Miami and Miami Dade and uh, funds for South Florida and for Dade, Dade County in general. And so then I, I said, well, how about education again? Well, again, a chance popped up again. I had a chance to be a director for special education. And I, that was for disruptive students. And I was an administrator, and I was a, and I, as well as a teacher in that program for disruptive students, kids who have been kicked out of schools. So I've had some fantastic opportunities. And now I said, now, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I fulfilling my commitment to that black slave who was praying, saying, I hope that someday there will rise among our people a warrior who would know I was suffering and would, and would fight our battles. But knowing there's a difference, simply knowing that the slaves were suffering is knowing why they were suffering. There should be some understanding of why they have been put in this position for such a long period of time, for 360 years of slavery and another 100 years of semi-slavery. And that's what we're gonna be talking about on the uh, Powernomics channel. And uh, what I call connecting the dots is bringing about some understanding as well as facts about why black folk have been suffering for so long in this country, have been abused, misused, and ignored why they've never been able to acquire any significant amount of property, resource, privileges, and rights that all of the people were, get, were given just by entering the country as immigrants. We're gonna be talking about all these issues and on connecting the dots on our program that should arise every, I guess about at least once every week, every, let's say every Tuesday for about 15 minutes, I'm gonna select an issue that from, from the old days or something that fall from the current affairs and try to connect the dots about why and how they impact black people. And in the course of that, we can give you a better understanding about what black folk ought to do, how they got where they are to get out of it. And so I look forward to seeing you on the, on the YouTube channel for Powernomics called Connecting the Dots. And thanks again for staying with me. And again, when you come on, use that mouse in the right way. Do not bypass this YouTube channel. Stop there. I'll be looking for you. In the meantime, be blessed and stay strong and keep the faith. This is Dr. Anderson signing off.